Okay, so in this video, I'm going to explain how I was able to make 25 comics in six years. But I'm going to be brutally honest, you guys are probably not going to like this video now. But do me a massive favor before you give me a thumbs down, watch the entire video because there is a lot of information that's going to be in this. And I want you to watch it all before you start going, Matt, no, thumbs down, okay? This is a question I get asked two or three times a week in my DMs, you know, on my website, that kind of thing. A lot of people ask me, you know, Matt, how are you doing it? You always seem to be so prolific. Their words, not mine. Honestly, I would never refer to myself in that in that way at all. Now, the reason why I haven't done this video before is, one, I didn't want to come across as an egotistical knob. Um, if you're a regular to the channel, you'll know that I don't tend to promote my own comics as much as I probably well should and go, you know, check out my website, that kind of thing, because that's not what I wanted from this channel. What I wanted from this channel is to be able to help new comic book creators on their journey and not be one of those creators that's just shilling their own comics, that kind of thing. So that's what Twitter's for. So if you follow me on Twitter, you know, you'll see that I'm always trying to sell books on there and that kind of thing, but that's not what I wanted from this YouTube channel. So that's why I've kind of put this video off until now. One, because I keep getting inundated to be asked about it, and two, I think I've done this for like a year and a half now, so hopefully you know that I'm not really that egotistical knob that, you know, wants to big blow his own trumpet about how many comics he's made in such a short space of time. So hopefully that makes sense. So let's explain how it works. So people always wonder how I'm able to put out so many books. And there is a reason for this. And it's because you are seeing all of my successes, but you are not seeing all of my failures. It's like those pictures of icebergs you see where, you know, you see a ship and they go iceberg straight ahead and you'll see just the, the, literally the tip of the iceberg. But what you're not seeing is the massive iceberg that's actually underneath the water. So that tip is like the last six years of me putting comics out. But what you're actually missing is another 10 years worth of work that I've done under the water where I've learned the craft, I've learned how to make a comic. And that's why I always tell people that you need to start small because if you watch this channel regularly, you will see that, you know, I put my first proper comic out in 2016 and that was Chunks. And I went back and had a look at it and I ripped it apart because even at that stage, even after doing all those little independent four or five, six page stories I did, even when I did my first comic, it still wasn't of a quality standard where I can go, do you know what, a publisher needs to put that out because it's so good. Yes, in my head, I probably thought that at the time, but as a creator looking back, I was nowhere near ready. So again, you're seeing the 20 plus issues that I've put out in the tip of the iceberg, but you are not seeing all the work that I've done beforehand. And because I've been working at this at such a long time, what you are seeing is you are seeing comics come out as they are ready, which I've been working on for years prior. So it's not the fact of me going, I've written this comic in January, it's gonna be ready in April, and I'm gonna put it out in the summer in such a short space of time. Indie comics don't tend to work like that, especially when you are first starting out. Literally, like you are seeing years of work suddenly come to fruition where the collaborators I'm working with, you know, they're drip feeding me art, you know, every couple of months I'm getting a couple of pages here, a couple of pages there, and then comics start to come out. So it's kind of like I'm starting the wheels in motion. 10 years before you're actually seeing them. So you're seeing the comics that I'm putting out this year, for example, but I'm thinking about and starting the comics that I'm putting out two years down the line. And that's how I work. I'm always thinking two moves ahead because I know the comics that I wrote a couple of years ago are now starting to come through the channels. So your next question is gonna be, Matt, how did you afford to put all these comics out without a publisher? And again, you're gonna hate me for saying this, I saved up my money to make comics. I knew what I wanted to do. I mean, again, this is just a hobby. You know, some guys play golf. For me, it's always been about making comics. I live a pretty simple life. You know, before I was fortunate enough to move into this house with my wife and my child, you know, I lived in a one bedroom council flat in Dagenham. And if you don't know where Dagenham is, have a look because it's a fun place. But all that time I was living there and all that time I was, you know, learning to make comics, I knew that it cost money ahead of time. So I scrimped and I scraped and I saved. Now, this is why you will see me on Twitter all the time trying to sell my comics because if I don't sell the comics that I make, I don't make any money to help claw back the costs that I've paid for my artist collaborators to work with me on books. It's so one of the reasons why if you ever see me at a comic con, I never sit down. I work shows as hard as I can to sell how many comics I can because every penny that I make from the comics that I sell goes back in to helping me make more comics. It's also the reason why I only do comic cons 
in a vicinity of where I can drive to and that doesn't involve any overnight stays because I keep my costs as low as possible. So I haven't got to pay for a hotel room. I haven't got to pay for drinks in the bar that evening, that kind of thing. MCM is my local show and I've just applied for May, so hopefully I'll get a table. It's a 40 minute drive away. I've just got to drive there, park and then drive back every day. For me, that's fantastic. And everything I make on the table, as long as I've covered my costs on my table, is profit that goes back into making more comics. And it's the same reason why, you know, I don't do comic conventions like Thought Bubble, which is a great convention. I'd love to go more of them, but it costs me a lot of money to get there. I did it once a couple of years ago. You know, you're talking petrol, hotel, food, drink, everything that was involved. You know, it was a free 400 pound weekend before I've even sold a comic. So I'd be making a loss. So I purposely only tend to do comic cons where I know I'm going to make money and I know I'm going to cover my costs. And it's the same reason why I call comic shops because I want to sell my comics to them. It's the same reason if I've got an appointment in my day job in a city where I don't live, I'll Google if there's some comic shops in that area and I will go to the comic shop and I will speak to the owner and I will ask them if they want to stock my books. It's a grind. And this is what people don't tell you when it comes to making comics. Yes, it does cost money but you need to make sacrifices. And I'm not saying that, you know, that I'm anything special, but when I was saving up to make comics, and it's still stuff that I do now because I still have to save up money to do this, I make sacrifices in my life. Every penny that I was making outside of, you know, essentials that I need, I was putting straight back into making comics. And that's how I managed to self-fund over 25 comics. Now you're probably watching this and going, Matt, you're out of your mind. Why didn't you do a Kickstarter? I tried that. I, I got chunks one and two ready. I launched a Kickstarter and it fell flat on its face. And I thought, do you know what? I'm just going to do it myself. So every now and then, if I had a little bit of extra cash, you know, 20 quid here, 20 quid there, I'd put it away for comics. And that's what I've done. And that's what I continue to do. And all the comics that you're seeing are self-funded because I never ask my artist collaborators to work for free. I always supplement the art that they provide and I give them half the ownership and that's how I've got to where I am. It's a grind. So if you are on your comic making journey, you're going to need to make sacrifices. You're going to need to take time. And this is the problem with the society we live in. We want instant gratification. We want to be able to put our first comic out. We want the velvet rope to open and say, congratulations, you are now part of the comic glitterati. We're going to put a logo on your book. You're going to sell millions and you're going to walk into Hollywood. That's not how comics work. Comic is a grind and it's a fun journey. Though. It's so much fun. I love making comics and that's why I started this channel. And hopefully that has answered your questions. Um, I'm sorry if it's disappointed you that there's not some, you know, mad rich uncle in the background that's given me money to put my comics out and, you know, he can help you too. But if you want to make comics, you need to save up your money. You need to work on your craft but you need to start small. So hopefully that's helped. Again, hopefully it's answered that question. I will see you in the next one. Thank you for watching and take care.